Coffee Talks and I'm here with the lovely Tamara. Welcome to London. Thank you. How do you like it? I do like it. Not fan of the weather, I'm not going to lie. No, it's literally been raining this whole um, summer. So. so obviously we're so excited to have you here and to be partnering with you at Simply. Thank you. Obviously now that restrictions are easing up a little bit, have you been out and about in London or just kind of just laying low? What's your plans whilst you're here? I have been out and about a little bit, but I couldn't tell you names or places. <laughs> I'm still getting my bearings. Yeah. Like it's just been a bit of a vibe everywhere I've been. It's it's been vibing, yeah. so I'm not like yeah. noticing any lockdown really. No, everyone's so excited now that things are opening up with back again. Yeah, it seems a lot more busy. That's well, everyone already knows who you are, who's watching. But just to give you a bit of a background, um, so people know exactly who you are and where you come from. Mm -hmm. So Tamara was from the show Married at First Sight in Australia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk to us about the show, like how, what made you go on it and would you go on something like that? Reality TV, would I do again? Yes. Uh, I think it's a wild experience that not many people would get to say that they've done. Yeah. Um, but how it all came about, I guess, was I was living in Bali at the time. I had just like done my last stint in Bali and I was a bit broke. <laughs> and I went back home and my like girlfriends had applied for me to go on Love Island Australia oh and God, I didn't even know about this yeah. and then I got a call from them and anyway that was like a few years prior so they had already had my details reached right. out to me just said we've got something that might be more up your alley and I just thought yeah why not, why not? Yeah. So I'm like single and broke maybe yeah. I'll find a husband who yeah. knows you know I'm so just to let people know that married at first sight, obviously you turn up, you've never met this man before mm -hmm. and you're marrying a man that you literally know nothing about. Let's just talk yeah. about your husband. Yes. Um, I, 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 definitely for me, like, I feel like this season was the first season of Married at First Sight that I feel like people in the UK actually watched because yeah. we hadn't really heard of it before. Yeah. Um, or definitely not watched it and obviously there was a lot of drama on the show so it was like mm -hmm. a massive, massive thing. So when you saw Dan and Dan was your husband, what was your first impression? I'm going to start by saying on paper, Dan was everything that I did ask for. Okay. So I'm not going to say they didn't try. Yeah. Um, but the package was just wrong. Mm. Um, first thing I noticed uh, as I walked down the aisle was he had all his football lads there. Like, mm. no family. Oh, I just thought, well, he's taking the piss, you know? Mm. And then I get down there and I have this big smile and it's like fake. Yeah. Ten years, and I was just like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my God, not God. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I was just like, oh, I'm like, I hate to be that person that judges, but like, yeah. all I can see was his fake teeth, and I was just like, oh. And I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't like fake teeth, but you know, there's just a way to go about it. Yeah. Um, yeah it was a very like, too true. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just very in your face, and then he's like, groomsmen all had the big fake veneers too. They were like real bright white pearls, and I was just like, oh. So, know. so did you literally give a list of? Things that you wanted a man and they had to they mm -hmm. found the person oh, yeah well i mean a lot of people did do that uh, a lot of people got obviously not what they asked for yeah uh total opposite but on paper dan was everything that i they would wanted. normally go for mm -hmm. or ask for in a man yeah um it just turns out that the package was not right and we mm -hmm. just didn't mesh well together i really thought you were getting on so well at the beginning we do have a lot of banter. The thing is, he is a funny guy. Yeah. Like I love a good laugh, and he used to make me laugh, yeah. and it was fun. And he, like he's a good friend, um, but just not, not the one. Yeah, not the one. Yeah. And obviously there was a lot of drama that went on with the girls. Like, yes. do you still speak to some of the girls? And like, was it as it looked on camera? Because obviously when it was going on, it was so like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's saying that about this girl and whatever. It was really like. I guess for bitchy, British, yeah. And for, <laughs> as for British people, like unless it's like, I don't know, we don't always see that. Like normally it's quite tame. Mm. So then when she was actually like this girl, Jess, out to steal your man, like what were your thoughts? Like were you actually able to confront her? And was all the confrontation done on camera, or was there like behind the scenes stuff? Like, um, like so I actually had no idea. You literally, had I no literally idea. had no idea. I was oblivious to the whole thing. Um, there's like you know anywhere from you know. 50 to 100 staff behind the scenes trying to make sure that I am blissfully unaware of what's oh going gosh, on. Wow. So for me, I literally have no idea. And you know, you can tell from when you watch it, they're going out while we're in the dinner party. But yeah. the thing is, during those dinner parties, we would get pulled out one by one and have like one-on-one -on -one interviews with our producers. Oh, so you just never knew what was going on. Oh. I was like fully made. So when they took you out, they then would take them out and let them together. do their thing. Yeah. Oh my god. So I had no idea. Because yeah, on camera it looked like 
they would just like how would I not see yeah. yeah no it wasn't oh, like that at all no. so for me I did I generally had no idea and I mean obviously as a girl you do have that intuition so yeah. I did know something was going on uh, but the thing is I just I didn't really necessarily care too much about it because I didn't really yeah. fancy him so I, I think you could like, tell as well. turn sort of a blind eye to it yeah. all um, how that you kind of like I had your wits about you anyway mm. and I'm just like I'm not gonna put you know I'm not gonna put all my trust in him because yeah, I mean, look, he's supposed to be my husband. At the end of the day, if he's going to be making eyes at someone else, then, like, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And do you still talk to other people like, on the show? Yeah. Well, funnily enough, I do. I, I speak to Jess. Jess and I are actually girlfriends. Oh, <laughs> my God. It's so funny how it works out. You know, her brother and I are best friends, so yeah. it just kind of, like, facilitated our relationship. You know, we both apologise for our behaviour. She obviously apologised more yeah. than what I would need to, but you know, I took some slams at her in the media and you know, it, it's just a vicious circle that you're yeah. in um, and you know, you just take swipes at each other and it's not like in my character. Yeah. And um, so I obviously would apologise for that and you know, she, you know, very apologetic for doing all of that to me on TV. You know, she never really meant to hurt anyone. Yeah. She was there for herself at the end of the day. So I guess it's a bit yeah. different because I don't really, I didn't really fancy him. It might have been different if I did, she'd probably be dead and so would he. So yeah. Like, <laughs> Do you have a favourite from the show? But my favourite human in the whole wide world is Melissa Lucarelli. Oh, she, she is, is a breath of fresh air yeah. and one of my best girlfriends still oh, to today. So, so nice. she's, I'm obviously going to have to say she's my favourite. Yeah. yeah. Before you went on the show, were you conscious about like, I'm going to be on TV, I have to look a certain way, did you feel any pressures? Or is like, have you ever felt any pressures to look a certain way or always be perfect since? On the show. I wouldn't say that they came necessarily from the show. Yeah, yeah the show definitely heightened them, but I've already already always had them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've always been quite a tall, slender girl, but with a booty. So mm -hmm. I wanted boobs when I was younger. I was like, I need to balance out my body. Yeah. Um, and you know, back when I was younger, boobs were in, bums weren't. Yeah. You know, like so that's sort of how that came about. And I've always wanted a nose job. And I think since I was 15, I'd been saying, you know, I want to get boobs and a nose job. And mm. my parents were like, well, when you turn 21, you can do what you want. Yeah. Um, but I went all the way until I was 30, and then I decided to get a nose job. So you could say I was insecure about it, but it, it wasn't something that was like, I have didn't, to do this because yeah. I hated it. I didn't hate myself before. I actually quite liked the way I looked mm. beforehand. Mm. Um, so it didn't derive from the show? And it just... No, but the show does show every angle of you that, that you might not necessarily see. You know, yeah. you're seeing like a whole 360 of yourself and you know, you might like only see this yeah. version. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So yeah, I mean, it does I mean, bring it's out... Not, it's not often that people film you from behind, is it? Like, yeah, do, day to day. do you get what I mean? So yeah. it, I don't know, it just sort of, I don't know. I'm not going to say that all of these things that I do to myself is because of the show. It's something that I've always had, always wanted. Yeah. And then you had the opportunity to do it. And then I've had the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Uh, like a discounted rate, so why not? You've always been then open to aesthetics and open to Yeah, that. always. So that's good. Because obviously for us, as a beauty and aesthetics clinic, it's mm -hmm. quite difficult for us to find people who are really open to talking about it. Okay. Because especially I sit in this area, which is why Dr. Youth is so good, is that he's so natural. Like yeah. All of his work, he really takes pride in making it undetectable results or whatever. Yeah. But it is really hard, I guess. It's becoming less of a taboo subject now. I don't really understand why. Yeah. Which like, of course, I mean, everybody in this day gets Botox. Why? Because yeah. it's going to prevent your wrinkles. Like, of course I'm going to do that. I know, that. I know. Do you know what I mean? It's something that I've actually been doing since I was 19 years old. I think maybe it's a UK thing, because I know that aesthetics is massive in Australia, mm. but definitely in the UK, like, people are only just starting to be a bit more open about it. It's really bizarre. Yeah, well, I mean, when I said 19, that was a bit fast stretch. But, like, <laughs> you know, I've been doing it... A while ago. Like, I've been doing it for years, so yeah. I, I don't feel why it's such a taboo subject. You know, if you want to tweak your lip, tweak your cheeks, like, get rid of your wrinkles, like, do it. Yeah, so it can be so confidence-boosting for people yeah. who are really unconfident about something. Your skincare, so... Have you always been into skincare? Like, is it something that you're not really fussed about? And now, you know, what's what's your skincare routine like? Well, I mean, now I do have a skincare routine because you know <laughs> it just gets shoved in my face all yeah. the time. But no, I mean, up until being on the show, I wash my face with soap and water. Really? Yeah. I bet, well, we're going to tell you off for that. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Like, really every, good every time I say that, I get into trouble. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I would say until I was probably 29. I would wash my face with soap and water. I mean, they do say if it's not broken, don't fix mm. it. But soap and water, yeah. that's outrageous. Did you moisturize? Yes. SPF? No. <gasps> and if you're 
Yeah, no, I've never used sunscreen. I do use it now, but like I've like not even on my body. Like I just, just I mean, no. I literally use a baby oil on when I Yeah, I'm saying. Like, yeah, just so cry. They would get you the oil with the like slight FBF in oh, it. Oh, 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 I would like, absolutely not. Just give me the oil. Yeah, just give me vegetable oil. <laughs> Take care of you now. Has it been extended? Have we have we delved into sunscreen? Yes. Okay. I do use sunscreen every day. So you at least cleanse, moisturize, SPF. Yeah. Anything else in there? No, just the basics. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Every right. now and again, I get a facial here and there. Talking about facials, then, is there anything that you particularly want to try? So, for example, we do super facials, which can target different skin concerns. I don't know if you've got any particular skin concern, like pigmentation. You can do that is my biggest concern, obviously. Pigmentation. No, no sunscreen. I've got lots I of mean, pigment. <laughs> you can't see it as well. Oh, full face of makeup. <laughs> Maybe, Wait yeah. until we take it off later, but you'll okay, see. Okay, super facial to target pigmentation. Yeah. That's what you're going to try. Okay, yeah. We'll have to put in one of those. Beauty. Mm. I'm guessing you really like beauty makeup. Or is it again, you just... No, She's not about I don't, it, are no, you? I'm not. Um, she doesn't even care. <laughs> no, I, you know, I'd much prefer to wear no makeup all day, yeah. every day. You know, I'll have my lashes done, I get my eyebrows micro, what is it called? Micro yeah. Yeah. And that's it for me. Now that the restrictions are open, mm -hmm. what's your plans? I mean, it's been pretty wild being in Australia because we're so far away. Yeah. So travel has been the hardest thing, and I'm not somebody who can sit still for very long. Yeah. Um, so being stuck in Australia since 2019 has been pretty wild. So naturally, when I had the opportunity to come over here, I jumped straight on it. Yeah. Um, but I'm just hoping that the, when the restrictions open over here, I can do a little bit more traveling around Europe, Europe as well. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. like, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Without having to do all these tests. Oh, I know. 19th of July. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And make sure you stay tuned and follow tomorrow. And yeah, we'll catch up with you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye! Ooh.